Not anything you think you haven't been told about the music. Well, here we are at Hilton Rig Woods, and uh, we're members of Carlisle Natural History Society, and we're doing a survey here of the wildlife of the woods this year, and we're looking at all, all groups. So we've got a group of botanists here this evening. We're going to be looking at the plants, but we're also looking at the insects. I'm here to look at the insects. Um, Milton Rig Woods is just off the A69 near Brampton. It's uh, an area of ancient woodland, ancient semi-natural woodland, uh, with a wide variety of plants and insects. It's managed by the Woodland Trust and we're aiming to see just how many species we can record on the site during the course of this season. And then we'll be putting together a report uh, from the Society, which will go on the National Institute Society's website at the end of the survey period. Well, I've moved away from the botanists, left them recording plants along the, the edge of the path. Um, and I'm going to look for some insects around here. We've moved out into a bit more open woodland and a bit of sunlight getting onto the, 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 the ground flora is, is better for a lot of insects. So this is a better area to look for insects than in the, the denser closed uh, block of conifers that we've just come out of. Now I've got with me my net and this device, which is a pooter. Uh, this works by, it's got two tubes that go into this large glass tube, two plastic tubes going in here. Um, if I suck air on suck on this one and it sucks air out of this tube and creates a bit of a vacuum which then if I point that end at an insect it'll suck it in to the tube and there's a little gauze on the end of this tube to stop me sucking the insects into my mouth which is a very unpleasant experience if that were to drop off um, and in order to find the insects you can either just walk around looking for them perched out on flowers or on leaves or whatever or you can use the net to sweep through the vegetation like this and uh, this enables you to find different insects. So what I do is simply sweep the net through the vegetation and by picking out different, different kinds of plants I can find what species of insects are living on different plants. So at the minute I'm sweeping through nettles um, and there will be some insects that are specific to nettles found here um, but then later on I might sweep the, the oak canopy or something like that and within the net here um, there are if there are flies and things in the net then they obviously fly straight out as soon as you look in it so what one does is put the net over your head and hold the end of the net up towards the sunlight and the flies will fly towards the light and so they fly to the far end of the net and I can see what's in the net then and use my pooter to collect the insects. And I simply suck up the ones that uh, I think look interesting and uh, I will be able to identify. So, um, within that, as well as the the various flies and things, you can see an awful lot of this particular kind of green bug. This is one of the plant bugs. Uh, these insects look a bit like beetles, but they're not beetles. They've got long tubular mouth parts that they stick into either the leaves and stems of plants and suck their sap, or, or other species of bug will stick their mouth parts into other insects, or even people, like bed bugs, suck blood. Um, they either they might be blood suckers or suck uh, other insects. This this particular species is a, a northern uh, species which is found on nettles in sort of woodland edges and open woodlands. It's a species called Calochoris alpestris, which is one of the plant bugs, um, but particularly associated with with nettles in open woodland situations. There's a little leaf beetle here, very brassy, uh, metallic green, colored. there are lots of different kinds of leaf beetle, um, but many of them have a similar shape and color.
And so these are the nymphs, they're the, the youngsters of the, the Apsi adult, and these are the nymphs of uh, bugs as well. Some little weevils in here. Good. This is one of the um, uncommon crane flies. It's quite a spectacular beast. Um, I think it might be Tenophora atrata, Tenophora atrata. Um, but these, the, the larvae of these crane flies develop in dead wood, so they're a woodland species. They need big old mature trees with dead wood um, in, in the uh, habitat. And the larvae, as I say, develop, feed in the dead wood, and then the adults hatch out and fly and mate and lay their eggs and carry on. So I'm not sure exactly which species that is and uh, we'll take it and check up on that. So over this water you get a different group of insects again, you get some of the wetland species. I've pooted quite a lot of small wetland flies out of the net, which I'll have to take away to identify. But among those things in the net, a slightly bigger insect, and one that I can easily identify, is the large red damselfly. I'll just put the pooter down. So. That's a large red damselfly. It's about the size of a matchstick, but it's very bright red, uh, particularly the males. Um, that's the only red damselfly that we get in Cumbria at the moment. There are some other species that are found further south in England, but uh, this is the only red damselfly that we have, so it's very easy to identify, and I can let that go and simply make a note that a red, red damselfly is found on the site.
and another different kind of damselfly, a blue one. So, so this is one of the blue damselflies, same size as the red damselfly. Um, there are a number of different kinds of blue damselfly. And if you look at the shape of the black marking right at the base of the abdomen there, just beneath the wings, there's a black U-shaped mark. And that means it's the azure damselfly. Another common one that has like a, a club, black club-shaped mark uh, in that position. So this is the azure damselfly. It's getting a bit sleepy at this time of day. So you, there's quite a distinctive and not very pleasant smell around here, but very characteristic smell of the stinkhorn mushroom. Um, and here in the grass down here, we've got one. Um, these these fungi um, have a, a very liquid um, head to them, which is very smelly. And the smell, which isn't very pleasant, um, attracts flies. Um, and the flies pick up the spores because this uh, liquid is, is full of spores and they tr transport them away. It's a way of the, the fungus dispensing its, its spores. Um, one of the very particularly interesting flies, is it? 